All right. Uh, today, brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you about something that I've shared before, maybe several times over the years, when it comes this time of the year. Uh, and that is because we are approaching what we call the holiday season. And believe it or not, y'all be surprised how many people uh, really honestly begin to stress at this time of the year. Uh, as, as even conscious people begin to stress at this time of the year. And one of the reasons why we begin to stress is because of something called influences, exterior influences, outside influences. Because of all of the stuff that's going on around us, you know, our loved ones and even our children, you know, they say, well, mommy, why can't I? Why can't we? Why can't we do this here? And that's, that's stress on a family. So to help equip you to deal with this stress a little better, I want to talk to you today about holiday situations and the African mindset, okay? But before getting into it, let's read what's in that circle right there, and I'll tell you why we're going to read it, because I'm going to say something today that's going to be outside of somebody's circle of awareness. Did y'all hear what I said? There's no doubt in my mind, it never fails. I'm going to say something that you might not agree with. And the reason why you won't agree with what I'm about to say is because you don't know what I'm talking about. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. It simply means you don't know what I'm talking about. I put on my Facebook page the other day, a man, when asked, how did I write that? I said, uh... A man was discussing the validity of the Bible. Grab this. A man was discussing the validity of the Bible. And in his discussion, he said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So the person he was talking to said, how do you know that? You know what the man said? Because the Bible says so. Did you get that? Yes. He quoted a Bible verse, and then when he was asked, how do you know that, what did he say? Because the Bible says so. Look at somebody next to you and say, never quote a thing, quote a thing. to prove the validity of that thing. <laughs> did that make sense? Okay, nobody in their right mind accepts a person's own words as a character witness of him. When you, when you go to a job and fill out a, a job application and it says character, with, character references, character references, why do you think they ask for character references? To attest to your character. So if your own words could prove that you are who you say you are, then they don't need character references. So that's the principle of establishing validity for a thing. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? Okay. So, again, what I'm going to say today, I'm sure it's going to be outside of somebody's circumference of awareness. Don't insult your own intelligence by saying I'm wrong without at least going to check out what I said. At least do that, right? Let's read what it says. What does it say? The space inside this circle represents my... All that I think I know about whatever I think I know is depicted right here within this circle. I must keep in mind that there's more to know than what is within the circumference of my awareness. Did y'all get that? Yes. Let's say this part one more time. I want to be sure you got it. Everybody say, all that I think I know. All that I think I know. About whatever I think I know. Now notice I didn't say all that I know. I said all that I think I know. See, because y'all would be surprised how many times I've had to go back and, and eat words because I spoke thinking I knew what I was talking about. See, that's why I put that there. Why do I stand and lecture? Why do I stand and talk? Let's read, what does it say? The aim of this lecture is to do what? It's to begin the process of undoing or reversing ideas and concepts that have been programmed into the minds of our people by what? By what? Religious. 
religious statements and church doctrines that have caused us to adopt a belief system. What kind of system? A belief system, a belief system that has resulted in our loss of contact with what is real, what is factual, what is historical, and what is spiritual. Now, I notice I said adopt a belief system. Why do they give us a belief system? Let's deal with that before I even get into the message today. Why are we given a belief system? Look at somebody next to you and say, for the purpose of control. That's the whole purpose of a belief system, y'all. Okay? See, in other words, if I can tell you what to think, grab this now, if I can tell you what to think, then I can control you. But if I teach you how to think, I no longer have control over you. Because you now can control yourself. Am I making sense? Today's message is the subliminal seduction of holiday celebrations. What kind of seduction? Let's deal with this for a moment. I hope I can get through these slides here today, okay, because the first few slides is actually a workshop in and of itself. The subliminal seduction. Now, it's bad enough to be seduced. It's just bad, outright bad enough to be seduced because to be seduced means that you're being manipulated into something without realizing you're being manipulated into it. That's what seduction is all about. But now when we say the subliminal seduction, that means that you are participating in your own seduction. Because you have some stuff that's in your head. You have some concepts that's in your mind that have been put there, that was put there. And usually, y'all, when these things are put in our minds, they're put in our minds before we're even able to think. Did y'all hear what I said? They're put in our minds long before we even know how to read, long before we even know how to exercise critical thinking faculties, long, be long before that even happens. It's put in our minds because we, we're born into it. When we came out of the womb, we came out of the womb into a system that was designed to get our people where they are today. Brothers and sisters, you'd be surprised. I mean, it will blow your mind how many brothers I talk to in lockup. You'd be surprised how many brothers I used to see come through the doors, man, you know, who came through, the, grew up in Sunday school. Grab what I'm saying. Grew up in Sunday school. Coming through the door, chain, handcuffed to each other, but they grew up in Sunday school. Am I making sense? All of this stuff they got in their head that was given to them, but yet all the stuff that was put in their head is not making a difference in their life. Why? Because what was put in their head, look, look at somebody and say, because it wasn't real. It wasn't real, man. It was a concept. It was an idea. It was somebody's doctrine. It'd be like the old Indian. Christian missionaries, of course, this is an analogy. Christian missionaries go into Native Americans to all their doctrines and ideas and concepts. Indian look at them and say, hmm, hmm. What all you need to do if you want this? What all you need to do if you want that? Well, just believe this, just trust that. And they say, hmm. And after the Christian missionaries finish all their talk, Indian chiefs say, do it grow corn. That's all the Indian chief want to know. You coming in here with all this talking, all we want to know is when, when you finish, will I have some corn after you finish? If I ain't going to have no corn, I don't want to hear it. You follow me? The subliminal seduction. Let's read. What does it say? The reason why holiday celebrations such as what? Christmas and Easter, and those are the two major ones, y'all. 
The reason why holiday celebrations such as Christmas and Easter came into existence was what? For what? Read it. Was to induce a psychological impairment that would result in a perpetual psychopathology, thus rendering those who are spiritual by nature impotent in the defense of their own spiritual well-being. Now that whole, that one slide will preach. Just that one slide is a whole workshop. Got it? Yeah, that's why I got it here. I want y'all to digest it. I want you to read it. Let's break it down. The whole reason why they came up with these celebrations was to induce a psychological impairment. In other words, it was to make you psychotic. Teach. Teach. And I'm going to break down a psychological impairment for you in a minute. Okay, a psychological impairment, and I, trust me, I'm going to show you in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual the code today. I'm going to show you the code in a medical manual that says you're crazy. <laughs> you can actually apply for disability insurance. For, for believing the stuff that they programmed in our heads to believe. It's a psychological impairment that would result in a what kind of psychopathology? Perpetual. What does that mean? That means ongoing. In other words, once they put it in your head, and once you keep tapping into it and believing it, you will be continuously insane. As long as you believe it. But you don't know you're insane. You know why? Because you were raised with this. You grew up on it. As a result of this perpetual psychopathology, it renders those who are spiritual by nature. Now who is that? Us, Us black people. Look at somebody next to you. Every, hold, hold, hold your circle up. I'm going to say something that's outside somebody's circle. Hold circle up like this. Say, say, and look at somebody next to you and say, he's getting ready to say something. That's outside of my circle of awareness. Now here we go. While you holding this up, look at the person you just talked to and said, you don't need the Holy Ghost. Now understand me, y'all. Follow what I'm saying. And don't take my word for what I'm saying. The word, the phrase Holy Ghost is a New Testament concept that was created by the Roman Catholic Church. Now why you don't need the Holy Ghost? Look back at the person and say, because you were born with the Spirit of God. When you came out of your mother's womb, the Spirit of God was already in you. That's why even as a child, when you did stuff that you know you shouldn't be doing, your conscience convicted you. Long before you accepted some doctrine of Christianity, you knew you were wrong. What was that in you that convicted you even as a child that made you lie? Your mama said, did you do that? Uh-uh, no. You knew you were wrong when you did it, and then, and then something inside you made you lie. You weren't taught to lie. You knew you were getting ready to feel something. <laughs> and you didn't want to feel that. And you know you did what you weren't even taught to do. It's called self-preservation. It's the first law of nature. Those who are spiritual by nature, it renders us impotent. Impotent, y'all, means powerless. It renders us powerless in defense of our own spiritual well-being. You know why you're powerless? Because you believe what's not real. Y'all all right? Yes. Got to ask you now because it's going to be... Y'all all right? Let's go to the next slide. Fortunately, 
We are living in an era in which people are exercising their God-given right of the freedom to do what, y'all? Say it again. The freedom to think. Everybody say think. think. I just heard Aretha. <laughs> you better think. She put it in a song. Your God-given right to think. Your God-given right to think. Now, why are you saying God-given right to think, brother? Because God designed your brain to do that. You don't have to give nobody's permission to think. That's the way God wired your brain, y'all, to think. As a result of personal literary research, non-religious based publishing entities, and teachers who are committed to the dissemination of historical facts instead of allegorical and mythical indoctrinations, people are slowly being what? Resurrected and what else? Liberated from the comatose state of spiritual and cultural illiteracy. It's happening slowly. I'm looking at churches today that are suffering because people are starting to think. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? People are starting to say, why? Now, be honest with you, you used to say it anyway. When you were a little child, you used to say it all the time. Mommy, why? Why? Mommy, mommy, why? Mommy, why? Mommy, why? Mommy, why? And if you have children, you know what I'm talking about because you didn't say, stop asking so many questions. <laughs> That's the way God designed us. So what happened is we hollered at our children just like we were hollered at and we got to the place where we stopped asking. Let's go on. Now, remember I just told you the God-given right to think? Everybody have grabbed this now. Everybody say, it's my God-given right, God right to think. To think. Say it again. I have, right I have the right to think. Now say, like it or not. Like now why am I having you to emphasize this? I'm going to show you. Because the Roman Catholic Church, follow this, y'all ain't going to believe this, what I'm saying. I'm going to show it to you. Don't take my word for it, verify The Roman Catholic Church passed a law saying that you are not even allowed to think. The doctrines that they taught us. And you say, well, I'm not Catholic. I don't guess you are. If you grew up in a Christian church, you're Catholic. Catholic means Christian. No, I'm Protestant. I ain't Catholic. Yes, Catholic. It's Christian. Let me tell you the difference between the two. The Catholic Church, the difference between the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church is, in the Catholic Church, you go to confess your sins to the priest. Right? A dude named Martin Luther decided that that wasn't right. So he protested against going to confess your sins to the priest. And his protest became what is called the Protestant Church. Are y'all getting this? Yes. So the only thing that changed was in the Protestant Church, you don't confess your sins to the priest. It says you can confess your sins to God directly. But guess what? Every other doctrine is the same. So all of the doctrines that we were taught growing up came from Roman Catholic bishops. Do you follow what I'm saying? Are you sure you follow what I'm saying? Good, let's prove my point. The Council of Chalcedon, what year did that take place, y'all? Now, come on, let's be honest, let's be honest. How many of you guys grew up in a Christian church? Let me see your hand. I put both my hands up. I grew up in the Church of God in Christ all my life. Got me? Okay. Not one time, not one time in Sunday school or not one time did I hear it taught from the pulpit about something called the Council of Chalcedon when I was growing up in the church. How many of you guys were taught about the Council of Chalcedon when you were growing up in the church? 
Thank you. See my point? Well, let's find out what happened at the Council of Chalcedon. In what year again? 451. Y'all all right? I want to I wanna free your mind today. In 451 AD, man, what year were you born in? I'm sure that it was well past 1,500 years after that. So if something was established in 451 AD, you know how many generations were born into what was decided at this council meeting? And was really deep about it, as future generations were born into it, they believed it to be the truth. You know why? Because it was taught to them by their parents. And everybody say this, I trust what my parents teach me. I trusted what my parents taught me. Yes, I did. And I'd go upside your head if you said anything bad about it. They were my parents. They, my parents wouldn't teach me anything wrong. But then again, brothers and sisters, guess what? Everybody say this. The mind cannot teach what it does not know. So when I started coming into this knowledge, at first I was upset with my parents. Then it dawned on me. They didn't mean no harm. They only taught me what was taught to them. And my grandparents who taught them, taught them what was taught to them. Because of something that happened in the 5th century. And here we are in the 20, 21st century. Y'all got this? Here's what happened at the Council of Chalcedon. And these are the minutes from the council meeting. Here's what it says. This wise and saving creed. Creed. A belief system. A doctrine that they made up. The gift of divine grace. In other words, they're telling you right now. That what they made up is a gift of divine grace. They made it up though. Got me? What does it say y'all? Read it. Was sufficient for what? A perfect understanding. And what else? A what? A what? An establishment of religion. What else is it going to say? For its teaching about the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is complete and it sets out the Lord's becoming human to who? <laughs> These are not my words. This is from the Council of Chalcedon. In other words, we made up this doctrine, we made up this religion, okay? And it sets out the Lord's becoming human to those who faithfully accept it. Now see, if the Lord had actually become human, whether people accept it or not, it would be a fact. But you have to accept this thing they made up. And then you empower what they made up by putting faith in what they made up and it becomes your reality. Am I making sense, people? Yes. Notice what it goes on to say. Since we, I mean, y'all, they're telling you. They're telling you in their own document. Read it. Since we, Catholic bishops, have formulated these things. Y'all see it? I mean, they're telling you in their own document, y'all. I don't know if I told y'all about my experience when I was riding down Interstate 20. Well, let's read. Let me finish this before I say that. Since we, Catholic bishops, have formulated these things, with all possible accuracy and attention, the sacred and universal synod decrees. In other words, we are passing a law. Roman Catholic bishops says we are passing a law. Read what it says in yellow. No one is permitted to produce or even write down or compose any other creed or to think or teach otherwise. Now, what didn't we just say it's your God-given right to think? Then how are the Roman Catholic Church gonna tell you? You don't even have the right to think anything different than what we decided should be. That's control, brothers and sisters. And then what's really deep about it is the Roman Catholic Church has its own military whose sole assignment is to protect this. It's called the Knights of Malta. Did y'all hear what I said? 
Jesuit priests right here at St. Louis University. I said, St. Louis. Y'all, I, I don't think y'all really understand the stronghold of Catholicism right here in this city. It's deep, man. This is what I'm talking about right here. Right here is the heart. Right here is the soul. Right here is the mind of what I'm talking about right now. No other place on this planet is as strong in this spirit of control besides the Vatican as is St. Louis, Missouri. So many times I say, God, why are you sending me here? And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm glad now. I'm serious. And let me, let me, let me, let me tell you why I say that. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why I say this. So, sometimes y'all hear me dis describe things. I guess you say, he really getting disgusted. Really it is an honor. It's a challenge. It's, see, I love a fight. I love a good fight. My name is Ray Higgins. I'm an ex-Marine, combat, recon Marine, military intelligence. I love a good fight. Everybody say this. A warrior, a warrior. is at home yeah. when he's at war. Did you get that? I can't think of a better battlefield than right here. And I ain't scared because my weapon is truth. My weapons are facts that you can go prove and verify for yourself. I'm not asking you to believe this. I'm asking you to go check out what I said and prove me wrong. If you can't validate that for yourself, I will resign tomorrow. Now I gotta reverse the challenge to you. If you see that I'm right, then stop this stupidity. Lay aside your psychological impairment. You got me? You can't even think for yourself. What's wrong with you? Who told? Come on, people. And it was deep. They want to call you a backslider because you're thinking. They want to say you, you done lost your mind because you're thinking. Grab what I'm saying, man. Yes, I have to be honest with you. Those of us who grew up brainwashed, and I was one of them. In fact, I did a lot of brainwashing. Pastoring for 25 years in that program. I brainwashed a lot of people. So when you begin to think, yes, you are going to lose your mind. You're going to lose the mind that they gave you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And then it goes on to say, check out what they concluded this statement with. As for those who dare either to compose another creed or even to promulgate or teach or hand down another creed, dig this now, for those who wish to convert to a recognition of the truth from Hellenism or from Judaism or from any other kind of heresy at all, if they be bishops or clerics, the bishops are to be deposed from the episcopacy and the clerics from the clergy. If they be monks or lay folk, they are to be anathematized. Now, it's actually saying, if you run into somebody, let me go back. If you run into, if you run into somebody who wishes to convert to a recognition of the truth, you ain't even allowed to help them. People want to know the truth. If you try to help somebody come to the knowledge of the truth, you can be anathematized. Anathematized to be cursed means to be cursed. It means to be, when the Roman Catholic Church anathematizes you, grab this, Steve, how deep this goes. When the Roman Catholic Church says you are, you are to be anathematized, what that means is somebody was to walk up to you and shoot you in the head, murder you. There won't even be a police investigation into your murder. 
It's a contract because you have been anathematized, meaning you have been a curse and worthy of death. And the most powerful organization on this planet is the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. You don't have to like what I'm saying, y'all. I really don't care. The most, and, and it's deep, because uh, this is what I was about to say earlier. Um, I was riding down Interstate 24. I think I'm going to share this with y'all. Riding down Interstate 24, and white ancestors spoke to me. I'm serious. I am serious as I can be. White ancestors. I know they were white folk. They were white people. Spoke to me while I'm driving down Interstate 24 through the state of Tennessee. I wasn't even thinking about white folk. Wasn't thinking about nothing like that. <laughs> and all of a sudden, while driving down Interstate 24, it was almost audible. I didn't actually hear a voice because I would have got out the car. But in my head, what I heard was, why are you so hard on us? I'm not, y'all, this is exactly what dropped in my spirit. Why are you so hard on us? Why are you blaming us for lying? That's what we do. <laughs> y'all, I'm serious, that's this just how it dropped in my spirit, man. Why are you so hard on us for making up these lies? That's what we do. And then it dropped in my spirit, what you should be upset about is that your people keep believing the lies that we made up. And really, y'all, it kind of changed my paradigm. You don't get angry with a snake for crawling. You don't get angry with a bird for flying. You don't get angry with a fish for swimming. That's what they do. And once you understand the nature of a thing or a people, you don't get bent out of shape when they do what their nature calls for. Even in the Bible, the Jesus of the Bible says to the Europeans, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, you will do. That's what it says in the Bible. Y'all, for 1,684 years, how, many, how long? 1,684 years. That's almost, we, we're coming, coming up close to two millennia here. For 1,684 years, people, especially our people, have been suffering from a psychological impairment called Christmas. In fact, everybody read it, what does it say? To believe in Christmas is a form of mental illness. It is. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that. I mean, medically speaking, to believe in Easter is a form of mental illness. Read it, y'all. To believe in anything or anyone that has no historical or archaeological evidence of its existence to the point of such a belief affecting one's behavior pattern and or conduct is a psychological impairment and is therefore, medically speaking, a form of mental illness. Teach, teacher. <laughs> to believe something that you cannot validate, to believe something that there is no evidence for, no proof of any kind for it, yet you believe it to the point to where you want to take off running around this room <laughs> crying yeah 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 that's a form of mental illness brothers and sisters now, this is here. and remember I told you here right here Di Diagnostic Statistical Manual 4 
Section 309.4 is called adjustment disorder with mixed disturbance of emotions and conduct. That's the medical definition for it. Adjustment disorder with mixed disturbance of emotions and conduct. And that is, you know, when, 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 when the doctors bill the insurance companies, they have to put a code in. That's the code right there. And the DSM number, and the DSM 4, 309.4. Yeah, buddy. So, those of you who believe, let me go on. As a result of this psychological impairment, which is programmed to us by who? You're a Gentile, Greco-Roman Catholic Church. The world now suffers from the most powerful psychopathology ever inflicted upon the human race. Y'all look at this. What is meant by the term psychological impairment and psychopathology in the application to the seduction of holiday celebration? A psychological impairment is characterized by a pattern, follow this now, by a pattern of persistently learning that which hinders or damages the spiritual, intellectual, and or emotional development of a human, of an individual, a human being. Resulting in, what y'all? A below normal, unhealthy, and unrealistic cognitive knowing or awareness function. Y'all don't mind this, this, this instruction today, do you? No. So I want y'all to understand this. The term psychopathology is the study of the origin, development, and manifestations of behaviors and experiences which may be indicative of mental illness or a psychological impairment. Now, for example, here we go, grab this carefully. The belief in or claims of a red-nosed reindeer <laughs> may be considered as a psychopathological sign. Now, see, it's really deep here because y'all saying, oh, bro, Ray, <laughs> yeah, oh, bro, Ray, yeah, we all know better than that. We all know better than that. Children don't. Little children don't. They make movies. They make movies about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and y'all take your children to see it. You need to be hit in the head with a pillow. You need to be hit in the head with a rubber bat. You need to be hit in the head with a, a metal feather. Because you are shaping your mind's child, your child's mind with that foolishness. Have them singing, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer had a very shiny nose. Now, come on, let's be honest. How many of y'all sang it? How many of y'all? See? All, all of them. All of them, right? The belief in a jolly fat man in a red suit who rides through the night sky in his sleigh being pulled by flying reindeer, landing on rooftops, and squeezing himself down chimneys less than 12 inches in diameter. And don't ever get his suit dirty. <laughs> and delivering gifts to children who did not pout or cry. And were not naughty but nice. Belief in that may be considered as a psychopathological sign. <laughs> Are y'all grabbing what I'm saying? Y'all know how many children honestly believe? that somebody's going to come land on their roof in a sleigh with reindeer? I remember the first time I taught this message in this church. Some folk got highly upset with me. I mean, got upset. Wanted to leave, man. Why are you going to take Christmas from the children? Arm in that. Whenever you listen, you know what I found out, y'all? Our children, follow this, our children, you had the capacity to learn while you were still in your mother's womb. Yes. That's why I tell pregnant women, read to your unborn child. Talk to it. Massage it. Because you are feeding its intellect already. 
baby ain't got no business saying Baba. The word is Bata. You want your Baba? If they can understand Baba, they can understand Bata. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -mm. Woo, buddy. We contribute to our own craziness, man. The belief in bunny rabbits laying eggs. Look at somebody and say, rabbits don't lay eggs. Think about that, Easter time. Do we really think about the fact that rabbits don't lay eggs? What rabbits got to do with eggs? You don't understand the spirit here. You don't understand the spirit of sexual looseness. Through the Easter celebration. Why you say that, brother? You, I, I, my, my son loved going for an Easter egg hunt. You don't understand the spirit behind the Easter egg hunt. You see, you got to understand, man, the Europeans would celebrate the vernal equinox. And what they do is they take their women and strip them naked and paint them different colors and let them go hide in the forest. And then the men would go find these women that were painted in different colors. And whatever, whatever woman they found, they had sex with them. That's where the origin of the Easter egg hunt comes from. You got your baby out hunting for eggs. <laughs> Not understanding the spirit behind this thing, man. Don't let your child participate in that, that, that sadistic pagan activity. That's right. Can I go deeper with this? Now I'm asking y'all, I'm asking you now. Can I go deeper? You know what I love? I love how y'all ask, can I go deeper? When I ask, can I go deeper, y'all say, yeah. You know? And then when I go deeper, you can't take it. So I'm going to ask you again. Can I go deeper? Yes. All right, here we go. The belief in a little white virgin born child. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Whose birth summons the journey of kings and so-called wise men from the Far East. Who traveled more than 5,000 miles on camelback in a couple of days. Can certainly be considered a pathological sign. Psychopathological sign. How are you going to travel on camelback from China to Egypt in two days? But see, we weren't thinking, y'all. Y'all all right? Now it's deep because, see, when I was telling my Rudolph, y'all was all right. See? When I talked about Santa Claus trying to get down the chimney, you laughed at that. But I see some faces frowning a little bit now. But that's okay. I asked you, could I go deeper? Y'all said yes. Hold up your circle if you need to. In fact, if you need to get a hula hoop and hold it up. Get a hula hoop and hold it up, okay? Read what this says, y'all. What does it say? The most powerful psychopathology is the belief in something simply because you want it to exist. That's my warfare right there. I'm trying to reach people who want the lie. They, yeah, that's right, they want it bad, brother. They, they want it bad, they want the lie. And see, see the cognitive dissonance on his face? You know, when I'm, when I'm trying to reach people, that's the look I see on brothers and sisters' faces. And after it's all over, you know, they say, Brother, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. And I understand what you're saying. But, I choose to believe that Jesus died for my sin. I choose to believe that. And when a person says that, you step back and say, well, the rest is up to God now. 
But there's one thing I know for sure. When I step back, you cannot unhear what you heard. Okay? To understand the subliminal seduction of holiday celebrations, you must understand that the programmers induced the belief in a lie. Grab this. They induced the belief in a lie and then glorified and glamorized the lie in such a way that it would create within us a desire for its existence. Y'all getting this? I made up a lie. Now I'm going to glorify that lie. And I'm going to glamorize it. Right after, right after, right after, right after, the very next day after Thanksgiving, all they're going to start playing on the radio. You know, wait, wait. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. What's that one? That is thing. Are you listening? This is it. Give it a song, singing a song. Passing in the winter wonderland. Only part I know is winter wonderland. You know? Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide songs being sung by a choir. Make a CD, huh? <laughs> Make some money to support the ministry, huh? <laughs> The lights, lights. My neighbor was putting up his lights. And he was having a problem putting up. I said, brother, you getting ready to give all that money to Amber and you eat. All that money to Amber and you eat. And it's deep because both of them put up their lights and then they stepped back across the street all the way to my house. <laughs> Looking at the lights. One of them said, Brother Ray, you ain't putting up no lights. I said, Brother, I don't do that. I don't do that. And I think the way I said it, they didn't even go any further with it. I don't do that, man. They glamorize this thing so, you know, it's like, wow. Now, people want the Christ mass of the Roman Catholic Church. They want it to exist. In fact, you know what, y'all? They need for it to exist because their psychopathology demands it. It's almost like a drug addict. You were given this drug from birth and now you long for it. Get angry with the children, get angry with you, parents, if you don't allow them to participate in it and make you feel like you've done something wrong. Mommy, why not? Everybody, all the other children doing it, mommy. Demand for its existence is so great that many people have absolutely no idea what they would do if it didn't exist. Therefore, they will do whatever they have to do to maintain the existence of their own psychopathology. Y'all grabbing this? Y'all see this? You see what, see what I have to deal with, y'all, as a liberator? As a liberator, as a, as a mind physician, I got to deal with people who want to be crazy. As a result, those who do not suffer from this psychological impairment or have this psychopathology, meaning those of you who know better, those of us who know better, guess what, y'all? We're cast aside, we're shunned, we're criticized, or outright attacked by those who are crazy. They say, we're crazy because you're thinking. A state of war is going on here between those who are psychopathic against those who want to free their African minds. For several thousand years, this midwinter 
time has been a time of celebration from people of, of who? Of the Northern Hemisphere. Now, why is that? Why is that? Because, you see, in the Northern Hemisphere, this time of the year, y'all, it starts getting dark real early. You see? And the reason why it starts getting dark real early is because the earth is, moved, is twisting on its axis, but it makes it look like the sun is moving. Sun ain't never moved. Sun is right where it has always been. Okay? But the people from the Northern Hemisphere don't understand the science of the earth's movement. You follow me? So when the earth you know, kind of shifts on its axis and what have you, it puts the sun in a different position, it seems. So what happens is now it gets dark earlier and the dark, the nights get longer. Y'all following what I'm saying? Well, the further this gets into the month of December, the darker it gets earlier in the day. So when you're up in the north, like maybe up in Alaska, way up in the north right now, you might not see daylight for another 15, 20 days. Am I making sense? Okay, so the people in the Northern Hemisphere, what happened is it seemed like the sun was getting further and further away and darkness was lasting longer and it's cold up there. So the people of the Northern Hemisphere, meaning white folk, in case y'all didn't grab it, <laughs> the white folk of the Northern Hemisphere, they started getting scared. God, the thing that's been giving us life, the thing that's been giving us heat is leaving us. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's cold. No heat from the sun. We're going to freeze it up. We're going to die. Because the sun has been giving us life. And it's leaving. Well, they didn't know that on December 21st, the sun seemingly stops moving away. And it stands still, so to say, for three days. In other words, the sun dies for three days. Did y'all get that? The Christians, the sun, the sun dies for three days, and on December 20, 22nd, it starts its movement back north. And on December 25th, it was clear in everybody's mind that the sun is coming back. The sun, God's sun, is coming back back again. That which gives us life is returning to us. So the people began to celebrate and rejoice and these pagan celebrations became what is now called today Christmas. Because God's son was born on December 25th. Does everybody understand this? The Norse people of Scandinavia, Scandinavia had a 12 day Yule celebration. Now y'all heard of Yule Tide before? as a tribute to the return of the sun. Fathers and sons would venture out and bring back large logs which they would burn. And families would feast until the logs smothered out. So that's where that whole thing comes from. Yuletide celebration, burning the logs. In Rome, Saturnalia, the holiday of cele celebrating Saturn took place. In the week leading up to the winter solstice, and the thing I just described, by the way, is the winter solstice. Romans would drink and feast. Slaves! They were so happy about this man that they let slaves free. They allowed the slaves to play the roles of the masters and peasants to play, be in charge of everything. Businesses were closed to make sure everybody had fun. It was also during the winter solstice that the Romans observed, everybody said juvenilia, where we get our word juvenile from. Allowing this celebration for the children and that's where the whole idea came from of Christmas being designed to give children gifts. So don't let your child be shaped by this pagan stuff. Looking for a gift. That some of y'all, you know what? I just got it in my spirit. Some of y'all done got the tree already. <laughs> so I, just, I, I just saw the tree in some of y'all's house. Some dog going to some I'm too late. I'm too late. I hear you, the bro Ray. You should have taught this last Sunday. Some of y'all don't ain't got the tree already. Man, don't let your children participate in this stuff. The Bible does not give a specific date for Jesus' birth. So, who came up with that date? Pope Julius I chose December 25th. 
as the day of Jesus' birthday. Roman Catholic Church. First called the Feast of the Nativity, the tradition multiplied to Egypt by 431 and to England by the end of the 6th century. At the end of the 8th century, Christmas had stretched to as far as Scandinavia with people taking part in carnival-like celebrations giving money to beggars. Now what's really deep here, brothers and sisters, is as you see, this is the same time that the Council of Nicaea, right after that. Council of Nicaea is 325 AD. You see what I'm saying? This council that created Jesus. In England, Christmas was banned when Cromwell took over the country in 1645. They vowed to rid the country of corruption, and to do this, they stopped Christmas. Wow! You stopped Christmas to rid the country of corruption? What's the correlation between Christmas and corruption? When Charles II was restored, he brought it back. In 1620, American nationalists had Christmas canceled. That's right, right here. And in Boston from 1659 to 1681, Christmas was completely forbidden. Anyone who was seen celebrating was charged with five shillings. After the American Revolution, it was reinstated, but it wasn't until 1870 that Christmas was declared a federal holiday. But we don't know all this. 1515, Pope Leo X said, what prophet have not that fable of Christ brought us? Now you know it's really deep. I remember the first time I taught this. It was clearly on the internet and could be validated. Now they're saying Pope Leo didn't say that. They're saying it was assumed he said it. Ain't that some deep stuff? Because see, now they got people verifying this. They can't have one of the most powerful popes of the Roman Catholic Church to make a statement like that because that's an outright admittance that the whole thing is a lie. So they had to, they had to renounce Pope Leo's statement. In other words, what he was saying, y'all, is look how much money we made from this tale about a figure that we created called Jesus. Creflo can say that. Eddie Long can say that. T.D. Jace can say that. Fred Price can say that. A whole lot of ministers can say that. Whew. I wish we knew what Pope Leo knew. The Christian faith was the most influential belief system in the Western world for more than a thousand years. But guess what, y'all? It's not as healthy today. As it was 100 years ago, you know why? Because folk are starting to think. Black people are starting to think. Man, y'all be surprised. And I, don't, I don't mean, I, don't, I'm not, I hope I'm not, I'm not trying to take the credit for this. I'm just one of the many messengers. But I get so much email from brothers and sisters who watch me on YouTube. I'm so glad YouTube exists. I don't know what to do. Any of y'all here ever see me on YouTube? See, look, look at that. See? You, 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 that's some deep stuff, man. A lot of people have sent me email, brother, thank you for freeing my mind. Whew, man. People are starting to think, y'all. People are realizing that they've been given a belief system that depends totally on the level of one's individual faith and not on the credibility of sound, factual, historical, and verifiable truth evidence. What does one do when they find out that the Lord's Supper ain't had nothing to do with Jesus? What do you do? Y'all know how, I'm serious, y'all. People get upset when you don't serve them that little grape juice. They look for that. You know why they look for that? Because they were taught, they were told that this is the blood of the Lord Jesus. And he said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in me. So we got black folk, black folk, who believe he actually said that. If they don't make it to church no other Sunday, they make it on first Sunday. Because that's communion Sunday. They got to get there to take that little piece of cracker and that little thing of Welch's grape juice. Only Welch's, that's the only one they will use. 
Some actually use wine. That's why some people go to that church. <laughs> I'm going over here and get communion today, because y'all, they serve, they serve Morgan David over there. People don't know that communion had nothing to do with Jesus. It began as a ritual in honor of Ptolemy V, you, you, Epiphanes. His nickname was what? Eucharistos. Eucharistos, which became the Eucharist in the Catholic Church. Are y'all following this? What does it do to a person when they realize that the first so-called man on the planet, who we all thought was Adam, never existed? I mean, that messes with people. There was no Adam, y'all. There wasn't no Adam. I, can't, I, don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. There was no Adam. What does it do to a person when they find out that what they thought was unique, original, inspired, and infallible collection of so-called sacred writings is really a library of stolen, copied, plagiarized, fictionalized, and fabricated stories from other earlier accounts of other ancient cultural stories that predate the lives by thousands of years? What do people do when they find out that, that the whole thing of Noah was copied from Utnapishtim and that there was no Noah? What do you do? What do you do when you found out that there was no Tower of Babel, but the Tower of Babel is really the step pyramid of Zosier in ancient Egypt and Saqqara? What do you do? We are at a critical and sensitive point in history. The lie has landed. Did y'all hear what I said? That's the deep thing about a lie, man. It can't fly around forever. Truth can. Truth got wings and it will fly forever, but the lie, its wings are artificial. And that's sometimes when people tell me stuff and come with some rumors and all that, I say, y'all just give it time. It, it, it died. You ain't got to even worry about it. People like to take stuff and run with it. Just, just give it a minute. It ain't going nowhere. As long as it ain't the truth. Everybody, everybody say this. I can't stop birds from flying over my head. But I can stop them from building nests in my head. In other words, you can't stop people from talking and lying and making up junk on you. But you can stop it from being true. Make sense? The lie has landed. The truth has risen and people are about to lose their minds. We must be careful now because there's nothing more devastating to a structure of lies than the revelation of the truth upon which that structure of lies was built. Did y'all get that? Because the shock waves of the revelation of the truth reverberate and continue to reverberate throughout the diaspora for our people for generations to follow. So rejoice with me, brothers and sisters, because the power of the truth will awaken our people. It will awaken even those of us who don't even have a desire to be awakened. That's how the truth works, man. You can ignore it if you want to, but once it hits your eardrums, yeah, buddy, we will wake up and we will get up. The lie has landed, the truth is on the rise. Ashe. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, the subliminal seduction of holiday celebration.